Hello and welcome to Secrets of Organ Playing Podcast. This is a show dedicated to helping you become a better organist. We're your hosts, Vidas Pinkavichus and Usha Motuzaita Pinkavichin. We have over 25 years of experience of playing the organ. And we've been teaching thousands of organists online from 89 countries since 2011. So now let's jump in and get started with the podcast for today. We hope you'll enjoy it. Hi guys, this is Vidas. And Osha. Let's start episode um, 708 of Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. This question was sent by Dawn and she writes, Hi Vidas, I'm finding your advice very helpful. I've started to approach my pieces like my scales from memory and I'm definitely making progress. I'm recognizing finger patterns are better too, which I normally don't. So thank you for your advice on memorization. In answer to your questions, my dream is to play competently and confidently perhaps in the future to reach grade 8 standard if I'm ever good enough. The three things holding me back. One, poor fingering. Two, poor rhythm. Three, slow speed. Thanks again for your advice and support. It's much appreciated. Don. Say hello, Osha, to your um, two... To a person who has your own name only in I English. I know, I know. Don means uh, Osra in Lithuanian. So, we carry the same name. Greetings. Uh, what can you advise uh, at, for starters to Don? Well, uh, hmm, poor fingering. Yes, first of all, if you think that you know you have poor fingering, Probably I could suggest you to write down fingering in because that might help for you to to improve your poor fingering because uh, it's it's a good thing for uh, for beginners to to do it because otherwise every time you might play the same piece with different fingering and it might confuse you and you might make mistakes. Uh, if Don uh, uh, was reading um, a new, my newsletter, right, uh, at the beginning uh, of, of signing up, we have, I think, 10-day mini course. And one of the emails uh, was about fingering, how to write fingers, fingering uh, and pedaling as well. For, for the piece, for Baroque piece and, uh, and uh, Romantic piece, legato playing and articulated legato playing. Uh, so I think it would be good for Don to review those emails and, and uh, as Osha says, write down fingering in, in her pieces. Um, a good example, of course, would be to to look at our site, uh, Secrets of Organ Playing, where we have some um, some um, fingering and pedaling written in, in the scores uh, available for our uh, students so that you could study how we do it and, and that's helpful. Even you could play uh, from those scores as well if you choose the right piece from our collections and archives and catalog. Yes, that's a good suggestion with us. Yeah, so you will find the link, of course, in our website, organduo.lt. Next, poor rhythm. I think my suggestion would be, you know, to count. And to count loud, at the beginning at least. This might help, you know, to solve the rhythm problems. Actually, many people, many musicians struggle with that. That's that's a common common problem. And uh, actually, the most uh, 
useful tool that I learned was to subdivide while playing. And uh, what I mean by subdividing is that, you know, the, if the smallest node value is, let's say, 16th in the piece that you are working on, then you need to subdivide everything into the 16th. I mean, for example, you are holding a quarter node, yes, and you counting one, two, three, four, yes, because the quarter node would have four, 16 nodes. Mm-hmm. And you would do that throughout the entire piece. That would keep you, you know, the, in a good rhythm. You would play the right rhythm and you could keep, you know, in the right tempo too. Because, no, very often people don't like to count. We don't like to subdivide. Some actually use the metronome to help them, but I don't think it's, you know, it's such a good idea. You might check up your tempo with the metronome, but you cannot, you know, constantly play with it because it's it's not helpful, it's not musical. So subdivision and counting is the best thing. And many people say, oh, I'm counting, but <laughs> we still cannot play right, you know, that's because we are just imagining that we are counting. You really n- need to do it physically with your tongue. Out loud. Out loud, yes. And even you can record yourself doing that and listen to your uh, recording and you will find out if you are counting out, out loud uh, correctly in the correct um, rhythm, right, and pulse. Yes. Number three, slow speed. Uh, basically, what she means probably is that she cannot play fast, right? Which mm-hmm. is nice. Why don't you... What is wrong with playing slowly, right? Slow music could be played slowly. Yes, but it's too bad that not all music is written you know, in a slow tempo, so you need to be able to play faster or, you know, in different tempos. So, but... But I think that tempo will come uh, come up. You will speed up with the more practice. I think it's very important to not get frustrated with your slow speed because it's good for the beginners or uh, beginning of learning a new piece. Because when you will deal with all the technicalities of your piece, the tempo and will come up naturally. You will speed up naturally. Mm, I know that now Osra will laugh at me what I'm about to say. Um, you need to apply my, my 10-step method. Shall I review this from the start? Yes, but I think I will start yawning <laughs> very soon. Yes, you, you go to sleep and I will uh, finish the episode. Number one, uh, step number one, start and stop at the beginning of each beat. If in 4-4 four, four meter there are four beats, you start with the first beat, play fast all the notes in between beat one and two. And that's easy because it's a very s- small fragment. Anybody c- could do those, you know, f- four notes in, in 16s. You stop and then prepare for the next fragment of four notes, one beat, right? And then do the same thing until you reach the end of the piece. With both hands, with both feet together, right? Uh, But very, very short fragments. And do this a few times until you can do, you know, three times in a row without mistakes. That's step number one. And Osha is actually yawning. (laughs) What? And it's only step number one. So it's a good bedtime story. Yes, it is. But now it's morning, so... Basically, step number two, you double the fragment and start and stop at the beginning of every half note. Basically, twice per measure until the end of the piece. Several times. Also, three times in a row without mistakes. Number three, do you double the fragment again and stop at the beginning of each measure. And then 
two measures, four measures, entire line, uh, two lines, one page, two pages, four pages, eight pages, well, and maybe that's the end of the piece, or maybe uh, the end of the piece would be the next step. So basically, that's 10 or 11 steps for a very long piece could be. Um, but that's very, very effective way to, to get to this fast tempo, the fast speed. What do you think, Osha? Yes, it's a very good way, but, you know, in my case, since I'm always working on so much music but at But you're not time, a beginner, you see. It's, I know, it's, I it's, know. It's, maybe it's not for you. You don't have these problems. You, you, you can um, solve the tempo issue naturally, organically, right? But for people like Dawn and others who actually write down this problem for me, for us. Uh, this advice is one of the best I could give. I think it's a very good advice. We it, just it, need to be patient, you know, it, with it. We yeah. don't have this problem, so we actually practice um, maybe organically uh, playing the piece and then studying the difficult spots alone, uh, isolating difficult spots, not not ent entire piece. Uh, but maybe when we master difficult spots, then we can practice entire piece, you know, organically, without the need of those short fragments. But I know that you have done this method but with some pieces, very difficult pieces, yes. that you had to learn in very short time. Yes, it's, it actually speeds up learning process uh, quite a bit. Um, and it's interesting because it seems so much time consuming, you know, working on all these combinations, but actually it saves time in the long run. Yes, and it actually frees up my mind. Uh, I know that if I'm applying step one, step two, step three, and so on, I'm on the right path. I'm not uh, uh, wandering around, uh, you know, and wasting time with difficult music. And difficult music is a very subjective thing to everyone, right? For us, difficult music might mean, uh, you know, inaccessible music to some organist or vice versa, you know, uh, or easy music for us might mean inaccessible to other organists, right? So it's all about your own skills right now. And if Dawn is uh, hoping to reach uh, grade 8 skills, which is a very good, you know, goal, because she has goal, and usually when people have a goal, set up the goal like this, for example, to reach grade 8, I think it's very good, because usually we reach their goal. Yes, and you have to, of course, reach seven, grade 7 yes, before yes, that, yes, and grade yes. 6 and 5, and probably uh, that's UK system, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and they have examinations. Y you have to take courses and, and even tests to pass those grades. And uh, obviously, that's a very good system to have uh, from the beginning until you reach grade 8 or even, uh, I don't know if they have grade 10, for example. Maybe not. Maybe mm. grade 8 is the, the highest. I, I haven't checked lately. But um, but that's a good goal, actually. Yes, very good. So hopefully uh, this was helpful to Don and others. And please send us more of your very specific questions. This was specific enough, right? Yes, Osha? yes, this, this was very specific. And we could give you specific answers. And uh, remember, when you practice... Miracles happen. This podcast is supported by Total Organist the most comprehensive organ training program online. It has hundreds of courses, coaching and practice materials for every area of organ playing, thousands of instructional videos and PDFs. You will not find more value anywhere else online. Total Organist helps you to master any piece, perfect your technique, develop your sight reading skills, improvise or compose your own music and much, much more. Sign up and begin your training today at organduo.lt and click on Total Organist. And of course you will get the first month for free too. You can cancel anytime. 
If you need one-on-one -on -one coaching, you can check out our page on Buy Me A Coffee platform. Find out more at buymeacoffee.com slash organduo.